Shalom. 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 Your sermon, Sunday, it Sunday, was Sunday, in my Sunday nice, sermon. Nice, yes. Nice. Shalom. Shalom. We're back. We're we're still wrapping up this season of There and Back Again. Uh, we were going to talk about some other things this week, but there were some unfortunate happenings. Mm -hmm. uh, some very sad stuff happened earlier this week uh, in Uvalde, Texas, which is just a few hours down the road from us. Yep. Uh, mass shooting at an elementary school killed 21 people as of right now. That's nuts. Um, an 18-year-old went into the school and, and opened fire. He killed his gran grandma too, didn't he? Killed his grandma, yeah, yeah. Shot a sheriff's deputy. There's a, there's a lot going on. Um, and as you know, as our audience, we, we avoid politics, so this isn't going to be a discussion on... on Second Amendment Second rights, Amendment gun rights control, or, things of that nature. We're not going to we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to focus on the story as it affects our everyday life. Well, and... Luther wrote a hymn called In the Very Midst of Life. And what that hymn is about is the reality of death surrounding us. Mm -hmm. Now, when Luther writes, wrote this, I mean, you're looking at the 1520s, 1530s. There's the plague. There's yeah. uh, everything's kind of death dirty. Is literally all around. I mean, you sneeze on someone, they die. Yep. I mean, death is everywhere. People aren't. Um, I mean, even if they live longer, it's a very troublesome existence. Mm -hmm. Most people die young. Many mothers are burying their children. Now, it's not the downplay what we go through today. Oh, it's better than it was back then. My point is, is when Luther wrote this hymn, he's surrounded by death. Mm -hmm. Death is something we, we put off at all costs. Well, think about it. When you go to a funeral of a 103-year-old woman, what, what do you hear people say? She lived such a great life. Yeah, she lived a long, yep. happy life Full of everything. Mm -hmm. Well, no, for the last 45, she sat in her living room smoking cigarettes and drinking schnapps and yelling at people. <laughs> no, but that's a different point. But the thing is, when we see someone who's 103, 104 years old, it's like, oh, they, they lived a full life. They got yep. to experience whatever they wanted to experience. Um, but then you look at the scriptures, and who are the holy innocents? Are these two-year-old boys, those, yeah. right? And even under two, yeah. two years old just meant, because your first year is zero to one. Then, so literally, it's like that these kids that we would say have only been on this earth for a year are the ones that are the holy innocents, mm -hmm. blessed deaths. You take the apostles, they didn't live long, full lives. Yeah, and the majority of their lives were pretty heavily persecuted. Yeah, too. persecuted yeah. and suffering. Death is all around and when we look at this situation, first thing we have to do is try not to resolve it right away. That's what everyone wants to do right now. Yeah. I have the solution on how to fix this so it never happens again. Yep. As if that's going to make burying your child or your wife or your daughter, yep. sister, easier. Yeah, unfortunately, the solutions, whatever they might be, don't actually... They're not going to bring them back to yeah, life. Yeah, don't bring them back to life. They're not going to come back because you have found... Because you it, even the words you think are going to bring comfort, it's not going right. to, to work. We could end all violence tomorrow and it would bring no comfort. Yeah, they're still dead. They're still gone. Yep. It doesn't resolve it. You want your pound of flesh, and who wouldn't? If someone killed one of my children, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh... I, I know who I am in Christ, and I turn the other cheek and have peace. Right. No, I would be uncontrollably angry and want to end whoever did it. Yep. And, and not with a gun so it's quick, but with some other means so it's yep. nice and slow. Why? Because I, I am overcome and possessed by rage. Yep. Sorrow that's turned into that as well. So to deny that right now, too, to say, well, there's no need. That, well, no, there's great need for, for rage and anger and frustration. There's sorrow. There's numbness. Yep. There's all these different emotions. So first thing is don't assume you know the right words to say in this hour that's going to make someone go, oh, okay, I get it. I'm perfectly fine. Um, right. So that's not going to happen. The reality is, as Christians, we need to be reprogrammed, regenerated into what it means to live this life right. in pursuit of the one that is to come. Um, I have that hymn right there, 750, 745, In God My Faithful God, it says, um, 
If death my portion be, it brings great gain to me. It speeds my life's endeavor to be with Christ forever. So the endeavor of our life, the purpose of our life, is to be with Jesus forever here in time and in heaven, the new creation unto eternity, where there's no suffering. All of those children now rejoice with Christ. And then people go, well, how do you know? Do you know if they went to church? You go to church and you're a jerk. I don't know if you're going to heaven. So why do you get to pick and choose all of a sudden who gets to go and who doesn't? Mm -hmm. um, it's not for you to make that decision. All we are gifted with is to be forgiven by Christ ourselves for our own sins. But we have to hear this on a daily basis. Death is something we've made into a terrible thing. Christ transformed death into the portal to life immortal. I think of this a lot. When um, a few years ago, I, I baptized, and then two months later did the funeral for a little girl named Taylor, four-year-old little girl dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. And every time I go up to the child cancer unit where you have two-year-olds, four-year-olds dying of this terrible disease, and then I walk outside and see like an 82-year-old smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey, it's like, what would I say? This isn't fair. Yep. This isn't right. Why would God do this? Why would he allow this? And then when Taylor died, I kept thinking it's not fair. She doesn't get the chance to gra you know, go to prom, graduate from high school, go to college, ha be a mom, yep. have a family. Do it. All those things are gone now. She never gets to experience them. And then the Holy Spirit hits me at the side of the head and says, why are you making those things such an grand thing yep. to experience she's with me now yep. says jesus idolizing the full life as we see it yeah is a full life instead of the actual purpose of it no i'm not saying let's all go get kool-aid and off ourselves john the john jones way right i'm not saying that what john, that was crazy dude in california but the thing is what i'm saying is we have to get out of this reality of being here is such an awesome thing mm -hmm. saint paul says it when I am in the body, I am away from the Lord. I'd rather be with the Lord. What does he say? To live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah, yeah. But we don't act that way. I remember when I was in Madagascar in the middle of a riot thinking we could all die. And one of my good friends, Evan Gagline, said that. And I said, shut up. No one likes you. <laughs> you know, I don't want to die here. I didn't sign up for this. So let's, let's not deny our view of death, the grief it causes, and the darkness Let's confess that, but let's also not deny what Christ has done to death and he's overcome it. Christ is the only one that can speak in this hour. He may speak through a pastor. He may speak through a dog. Yep. He may speak through someone who's not even, a, I mean, I don't know how he's going to speak, how he's going. And for me to limit him is quite arrogant of me. Right. So in this time we pray, we preach Christ. And inevitably, we also comfort each other in the reality that death is, is not the end. But we still linger here and suffer. We still suffer here because we want them to be around still. I mean, who wouldn't want that? You yep. want that person to be with you. Yep. And guess yep. what? You will be. Yep. <laughs> when you go to heaven, you don't get amnesia. You don't just forget all of a sudden. It's not like once you get there, uh, everything you're, you're a robot worshiping God unto eternity. If that was the case, the only song would be our God's an awesome God unto the ages of ages. And that's not the case. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. You're not a robot or a puppet unto eternity. God doesn't do it. Well, there's just no sin. Mm -hmm. There's no suffering. There's no death. None of this stuff is there now. But you are you are you in Christ. You are you already in Christ. The new creation's already begun. And that's the only thing we can preach in this time. So pray for the pastor. I think it's Trinity Lutheran Church there. Mm -hmm. He has a parishioner of his that is the a counselor for that school. So pray for that pastor that he can help bear that cross with her. And pray for every one of those families that now has to go through a yep. funeral this week. Instead of posting the pictures last day of school, school. for their daughter, they're posting an obituary. Yep. So mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. With the blessed hope and assurance that Jesus says to Martha... He who believes in me shall never die. So that's all we can do, and that's all we should do. 
So if you're Missouri Senate, which I assume is people who follow us, don't do stupid things right now, like posting either pro, like pro, I'm going to keep my guns and this is a men. No one needs to know your little opinions. That's yep. all they are. What people need to hear right now is comfort uh, in the words of Christ. Christ is for you. Death is defeated. And I'm here for you. And whatever I can do for you, that's all we can do. There we so, go. There it is. There we go. All right. Just a few more episodes uh, for this season. I know uh, we've been alluding to that. Uh, we have a special challenge here coming up, too. Uh, let's drink some soda. We'll drink some soda. We'll get a little lighter next time. Yeah. Well, not lighter physically because the soda will make us heavier. But, you know, yeah. y'all know it. We'll, we'll do some burpees. We we'll go. do a burpee challenge. We'll do a burpee challenge afterwards. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next week here and there and back again. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>